with the organ ringing in our ears and the light finally streaming through these windows and the vision of his graduating class, you can feel the spirit of celebration. Let us attend now to the spirit, the Holy Spirit that is at the heart of this day, the heart of all our days. Let us pray. Holy God, source of all, we turn to you. Open our hearts, settle our thoughts, bridge our souls, ours to yours and to one another. We ask your blessing upon each one gathered here, graduates, faculty, administrators, family, friends. May our joy, our reflections, our hopes, our intentions be grounded in you, reflective of you. God, we ask your blessing upon Atlantic School of Theology and all who work and strive for its mission. Grant them continuous encouragement, creative vision and healthy community as we see here this morning. May they and we be living stones of Christ's sure foundation. Hear our prayer, O God, in the name and the hope and the joy of Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. Welcome. On behalf of the Board of Governors, the Senate, the President, the faculty, the staff, the alumni, students, the entire Atlantic School of Theology family. Welcome. Pujilasi, in the language of the people on whose ancestral territory, Mi'kma'ki, that we meet today. It is our custom and it is our privilege on these formal occasions to acknowledge publicly that the treaties of peace and friendship with the Mi'kmaq and Maliseet people signed with the British Crown almost 300 years ago, beginning in 1725, did not deal with surrendering land or resources, but rather recognized their title to the land and established rules for what was to be an ongoing relationship between nations. My Mi'kmaq friends tell me that Pajlasi has the warm sense of come in and sit down. And so, in that spirit of warmth, of peace, of friendship, and Christian love, Pajalasi, welcome. Like the psalmist, AST rejoices in having a goodly heritage. This year marks 140 years of unbroken theological education on our lovely little campus down there on the Northwest Arm. It's almost five decades that the theological schools of the United Anglican Roman Catholic Churches in Atlantic Canada made history by establishing the first ecumenical institution of its kind in North America and possibly the world. It's 44 years since we became a full-fledged university, and this year also marks our 16th year of affiliation with St. Mary's University, uh, which remains a valued and productive collaboration between our two independent institutions. Our founders in 1971 referred to their visionary project as a joint adventure and a successful adventure it continues to be. And that is thanks in no small part to the unwavering and the unstinting support of our founding parties. The Anglican Diocese of Nova Scotia and Prince Edward Island, the Diocese of Fredericton, University of King's College, the Roman Catholic Archdiocese of Halifax, Yarmouth, and the United Church of Canada's Pine Hill Divinity Hall, its Maritime and Newfoundland and Labrador conferences. A special thanks to all of our guests today, especially those who joined us in the graduation uh, procession. And finally, on your behalf, thanks to the session ministers and the congregation of St. Andrew's United Church for hosting this, our 47th convocation. The primary purpose of convocation, calling together, is of course the formal conferring of degrees, diplomas, certificates to the graduates of 2018. So a special welcome to all those who are here, to those who are watching our live stream broadcast, to the family and friends who are celebrating this day with you. 
and to you, the graduates. When you enrolled in AST, you were looking for more than just a certificate to hang on the wall. You were committing yourselves to examining your deepest held convictions, to draw on the wisdom of the ages, to develop practical skills, and to put your faith into action. You are certainly finishing this stage of your life's adventure in an interesting and challenging time. Relentless population growth, unpredictable climate change, unsustainable inequalities, dysfunctional ideologies, a time when principal leadership is more evident in its absence than its presence sometimes. We need you. We need the dedicated, effective, faithful leadership that you are now more than prepared to give. So today, let's focus on celebrating your success, take justifiable pride in your accomplishments, enjoy yourselves this evening. But then, tomorrow morning, get out there and start changing the world. Go and change the world in the confidence, knowing that we go with you. With You go with our love, with our prayers, with our trust, and our deepest respect. May God bless you and encourage you and strengthen you in all that you are called to do. Amen. A reading from the book of Joshua, chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, My servant Moses is dead. Now proceed to cross the Jordan, and you, all this people, into the land that I am giving to them, to the Israelites. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given to you, as I promised to Moses. From the wilderness and the Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites to the great sea in the west shall be your territory. No one shall be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you. Be strong and courageous, for you shall put this people in possession of the land that I swore to their ancestors to give them. Only be strong and very courageous, being careful to act in accordance with all the law that my servant Moses commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, so that you may be successful wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you will, may be careful to act in accordance with all that is written in it. For then you shall make your way prosperous, and then you shall be successful. I hereby command you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Amen. Psalm 139 will be read responsively with the refrain as printed in your program. God, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and rise up, you discern my thoughts from afar. You discern my path and the places I rest. You are familiar with all my ways. 
Before a word is on my tongue, you know it, O oh God, completely. You guard me from behind and before and lay your hand upon me. It is beyond my knowledge. It is a mystery. I cannot fathom it. Lord, you have searched me. Where can I escape from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I lie down in the grave, you are even there. If I take wing with the dawn and alight at the sea's farthest limits, there also your hand will be guiding me, your powerful hand holding me fast. If I say, let the darkness cover me, and my day be turned to night. Even darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day, and darkness is as light to you. Lord, you have searched me. You know me through and through. It was you who formed my inward parts. You fashioned me in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wondrous are your works that I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being fashioned in secret, intricately woven into the mystery of the clay. Your eyes saw my substance taking shape. In your book, my every day was recorded. All my days were fashioned even before they came to be. God, you have searched me. You know me through and through. How deep your designs are to me, O oh God. How great their number. I try to count them, but they are more than the sand. I come to the end, and I still with you. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Test me and know my thoughts. Watch closely, lest I follow a path of error and guide me in everlasting way. Lord, you have searched me. You know me through and A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function, so we who are many are one body in Christ, and individually we are members one of another. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. God, thank you for reminding us daily that your love covers all of us, that your promises are steadfast, and with you, nothing is impossible. We are so grateful for the gift of faith that teaches us resilience in the face of adversity, hope in the face of despair, courage in the face of fear, and reconciliation in the face of separation. We know, O oh God, that you summon us into this world and that you have anointed all of us to work with you, bringing good news to the poor, justice for the oppressed, comfort for the brokenhearted, and release for the captives. Renew our minds now, Lord, with your creative imaginations that brings purpose and vision and transformation. God of grace and glory, we thank you for the gift of the Atlantic School of Theology, for the wisdom that we have gained, the adventures we have had, and the friends we have made. Make us mindful of those who have made our education possible, for any who for sad reasons might not be here today, and all who lack the opportunities that we enjoy. We ask that you open the eyes of our heart to see what we have yet to learn about ourselves, humanity, and the world. Take our regrets, O oh God, and our mistakes, and our hurts, and our false starts, and heal them into a gentler compassion, greater understanding, and truer concern for those who can only dream of experiencing a day like today. Loving God, you are humble and meek, Color our sense of achievement today with humble gratitude 
for family and teachers and mentors who have taught us, trained us, and helped us on our way. Let us never forget that you have bound yourself to us and that you are the wellspring of our life and our vocation. Take our fears and shape them into the wonder at the world that you have made and joy at the companions that you have given us with it. Help us to treat each new place to which we may move as a seat of learning. Each new friend and colleague as a new faculty and each new challenge and trial as a new curriculum. And God, make us bold in Christ's name. Fill us up with your goodness, your truth, and your beauty, that all whom we may meet find in us a blessing. Take our hearts, our hands, our souls, and our voices, and make them a melody of rejoicing, a sunrise of wonder, and a symphony of beauty today and every day. We pray all of this in and through the name of Jesus as we sing together the words that Jesus taught us. The peace of Jesus Christ to be with you all. The same peace that the risen Christ breathed on his disciples in that locked room millennia ago is the peace that knits together our AST community into the body of Christ. Whether we share this peace with a handshake or a hug, with the words, the peace of Jesus Christ be with you, or peace be with you, or an abbreviated peace. (laughs) These simple words and actions have profound meaning. With these simple gestures, we express our gratitude for Jesus' gift of peace, a peace that the world cannot give, a peace that passes all understanding. We celebrate the small miracle that is AST, the coming together in life-giving community of Roman Catholics and Anglicans and United Church of Canada members, Baptists, Lutherans, Buddhists, Presbyterians, agnostics, and more. We embody our commitment to strive toward forgiveness and reconciliation, and we demonstrate deep caring for one another, the kind of caring that is only possible within the frame of God's love and Christ's peace. 
And so I now invite you, as you are able to stand and share signs of peace with one another. God's grace and peace be always with you.
President Bennett, Chairman Griffiths, it is my pleasure to announce now the names of those who will receive certificates, diplomas, and degrees today. First, for the Adult Education Certificate in Theological Studies, Janet Solos. On behalf of Atlantic School of Theology, I hereby confer upon you the a Adult Education Certificate in Theological Studies. Congratulations. Thank you. For the Diploma in the New Evangelization, Gabrielle Burnham. On behalf of Atlantic School of Theology, I hereby confer upon you the Diploma in the New Evangelization. Congratulations. <laughs> and Michael Ross McGinnis. On behalf of Atlantic School of Theology, I hereby confer upon you the Diploma in the New Evangelization. Congratulations. <clears throat> For the Diploma in Youth Ministry, Jennifer Francia. On behalf of Atlantic School of Theology, I hereby confer upon you the Diploma in Youth Ministry. Congratulations. And Emma Kathleen Simon. On behalf of Atlantic School of Theology, I hereby confer upon you the Diploma in Youth Ministry. Congratulations. For the Graduate Certificate in Theological Studies, Robert Pack. On behalf of Atlantic School of Theology, I hereby confer upon you the Graduate Certificate in Theological Studies. Congratulations. <clears throat> and for the Master in, of Theological Studies, Catherine Ruth O'Brien, to be conferred in absentia. Conferred in absentia. The Master of Arts, Theology and Religious Studies, Greg Aikens, to be conferred in absentia. Conferred in absentia. <laughs> Jamie Bates. By the authority vested in me by the Board and Senate of Atlantic School of Theology, I hereby admit you to the degree of Master of Arts, Theology, and Religious Studies with all the rights, honors, and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations. Gary Carey. By the authority vested in me by the Board and Senate of Atlantic School of Theology, I admit you to the degree of Master of Arts, Theology and Religious Studies 
with all the rights, honors, and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations. Jillian Lee, whose thesis was entitled Reconceptualizing Health, a conversation between quantum science, energy medicine, and mystical theology. By the authority vested in me by the Board and Senate of Atlantic School of Theology, I admit you to the degree of Master of Arts, Theology, and Religious Studies, with all the rights, honors, and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations. Angela Lewis. By the authority vested in me by the Board and Senate of Atlantic School of Theology, I admit you to the degree of Master of Arts, Theology and Religious Studies, with all the rights, honors, and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations. By the authority vested to me by the Board and Senate of Atlantic School of Theology, I admit you to the degree of Master of Arts, Theology and Religious Studies, with all the rights, honors, and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations. Jeffrey Mackay Murray, to be conferred in absentia. Conferred in absentia. Deborah Terrio, whose thesis was entitled Grace-Filled Moments, Creative Arts and Pastoral Care with Patients Living with Dementia in the Hospital Setting by the authority vested in me by the Board and Senate of Atlantic School of Theology, I admit you to the degree of Master of Arts, Theology and Religious Studies, with all the rights, honors, and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations. Virginia Lee Wilmhoff, whose thesis was entitled, How to Cultivate Virtue, Monasticism as a Response to Secularism. By the authority vested in me by the Board and Senate of Atlantic School of Theology, I admit you to the degree of Master of Arts, Theology and Religious Studies, with all the rights, honors, and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations. the Master of Divinity, David Atwood. By the authority vested in me by the Board and Senate of Atlantic School of Theology, I admit you to the degree of Master of Din Divinity, with all the rights, honors, and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations. By the authority vested in me by the Board and Senate of Atlantic School of Theology, I admit you to the degree of Master of Divinity, with all the rights, honors, and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations. <clears throat> Angela Jean McLean.
by the authority vested in me by the Board and Senate of Atlantic School of Theology, I admit you to the degree of Master of Divinity with all the rights, honors, and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations. Don Selstead. By the authority vested to me by the Board and Senate of Atlantic School of Theology, I admit you to the degree of Master of Divinity with all the rights, honors, and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations. Thank you. <clears throat> Phil Wilson. By the authority vested to me by the Board and Senate of Atlantic School of Theology, I admit you to the degree of Master of Divinity with all the rights, honors, and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations. Patrick William Woodbeck. By the authority vested in me, by the Board and Senate of Atlantic School of Theology, I admit you to the degree of Master of Divinity with all the rights, honors, and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations. I call in on Professor Susan Wilhawk to offer the citation for Mayenne E. Francis, who is to receive the degree of Doctor of Divinity, honoris causa. I invite Dr. Francis forward as well. The Atlantic School of Theology will bestow the honorary Doctor of Divinity on her honor May Ann Francis, in recognition of her astounding contribution to this community, to AST, and to the world. The Honorable Dr. May Ann Francis is a visionary pioneer, an unfaltering public leader. Her lifelong work and passion has been toward advancing diversity, and racial and gender equality as a human rights advocate. Her life represents many firsts. She was the first African Nova Scotian woman to serve as director and CEO of the Nova Scotia Human Rights Commission, and the first woman to hold the office of provincial ombudsman. When she became Lieutenant Governor of Nova Scotia in September 2006, the highest ranking official in Nova Scotia, she became the first black Nova Scotian and the second black Canadian and the second woman to hold this position. She was the first vice regal representative to grant the royal prerogative of mercy, free pardon, in the history of Canada. This free pardon was to civil rights activist Viola Desmond, and her honor's decision to grant the posthumous pardon was a watershed moment in the history of race relations in this province. As Lieutenant Governor, she attended more than 3,000 activities with a focus on community. She served a four-year commission as Honorary Lieutenant Colonel of three intelligence 
company in the Canadian Forces. Her accomplishments while Lieutenant Governor included welcoming Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II to Nova Scotia and Government House in 2010, supporting the arts, celebrating and advocating for young people, and opening Government House for guests and public lectures. Originally from Whitney Pier in Cape Breton, Dr. Francis was one of seven children of an archpriest in the African Orthodox Church. She grew up in the church, guided by dedicated parents, and she continues to be driven by her strong faith and values to this day. The Honorable Dr. Francis holds a Bachelor of Arts from St. Mary's University and earned a Master of Arts degree in Public Administration from New York University in 1984. In addition, she has a Certificate in Equal Opportunity Studies from Cornell University, a Certificate in Paralegal Studies from Long Island University, and a Certificate in Theological Studies from the Atlantic School of Theology. She's also the recipient of honorary degrees from Mount St. Vincent University, St. Mary's University, York University in Ontario, Dalhousie University, and an honorary diploma from the Nova Scotia Community College. In 2015, she was appointed to the Faculty of Management School of Public Administration at Dalhousie University as the first distinguished public service fellow, again making history as Dalhousie's University's first employment equity officer. Her numerous awards include a Harry Jerome Award from the Black Business and Professional Association, the Multicultural Education Council of Nova Scotia Award, medals for both the Queen's Golden and Diamond Jubilees. She was a recipient of a Luminary Award from the University of the West Indies, and was also awarded the World Peace Tartan from the Celtic Cultural Society of Nova Scotia and inducted into the Order of Nova Scotia. Her past leadership roles include that of Assistant Deputy Minister in Ontario, co-chair of an international project with United Way and Trade, an administrative manager in human resources with the Brooklyn District Attorney's Office in Brooklyn, New York. She addressed human rights issues in a regular column for the Chronicle Herald newspaper in 2004 to 2006. She has served on boards and committees of numerous not-for-profit organizations, including the United Way, the Canadian National Institute for the Blind, Imagine Canada, the Canadian Center for Philanthropy, and the Nova Scotia Art Gallery. In 2015, the Nova Scotia Community College, Marconi Campus in Cape Breton, where she was born, renamed the campus library, the Honorable May Ann Francis Library. In recognition of the Honorable May Ann Francis Hope and Inspiration Award, created by Dr. Francis, to provide financial assistance on all 13 campuses to enroll students 
who are experiencing financial difficulties. A true friend of AST and theological education, she served as our chair of the Board of Governors from 2015 to 2017. Dr. Francis became the first African-Canadian chair or chancellor to preside over the installation of a president of a mm. university in this region. Dr. Francis has been and continues to be an outstanding steward and champion of the university. The Atlantic School of Theology recognized her by naming the Faith in Action Award created by Dr. Francis after her. It is the Honorable May Ann Francis Faith in Action Award. The award recognizes unsung heroes who work tirelessly to make our communities a better place to live. If this does not seem like enough to you, <laughs> in addition to her list of credentials, Dr. Francis published her first children's book, Nimbus Publishing, entitled May Ann's Train Ride in October 2015. A person of inexorable energy, she shows no signs of slowing down and is currently working on her memoir. In an age of political disquietude and upheaval, hers is a strong, consistent, and true voice for change. Speaking out firmly against racism and speaking and standing for human dignity and rights and collaboration. She has given public lectures and interviews in which she speaks openly of her faith in God and the importance of her prayer life in helping her to take on the responsibilities of leadership. Dr. Francis is an inspiration to us all, not only for her significant accomplishments, but for her personal ethic of care and compassion. So in politics and in life writ large, she is gracious, wise, and faithful, using her considerable influence to inspire and challenge us to build a more inclusive and loving society. I hope all of us here today will heed her example. By the authority vested in me by the Board and Senate of Atlantic School of Theology, I admit you to the degree of Doctor of Divinity, honoris causa, with all the rights, honors, and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations.
I would call now on the Reverend Deborah Burleson to offer the citation for Ron Cutler, who is to be admitted as an associate of Atlantic School of Theology. Honored guests, how good it is that the Right Reverend Ronald Cutler today becomes an associate of Atlantic School of Theology. By this, we express our deep appreciation for his contribution to the life of the school, to its students, and in their continuing ministries as they move out to serve God's people. Though he was born and raised in Montreal and studied at McGill, God was active in the life of the young Ron Cutler right away and drew him away from the city to the unusual beauty and hardship of rural Newfoundland for ordination and his first parishes. And then with Marianne and family, it was on to Cape Breton and finally to Lower Sackville. And then in 2008 and again in 2014, the lay people and the clergy of Nova Scotia and Prince Edward Island chose him as their bishop, that is, pastor to the pastors, and the chief teaching authority of the church in this place. Before taking on the bishop's mantle, Ron went away on retreat to pray, and he came back to remind us that it's not about us, it's about the world and charged his people to go out into God's world, bringing the hope of the gospel. Last year, his fellow bishops from Montreal and Points East chose him to be their metropolitan, or archbishop. Hmm. And all of these are important. These roles and titles, these charisms, this service is essential and holy for God's church. But when as bishop, he would visit the Anglican formation class at school. The talk would start somewhere official and bishopy, <laughs> but it would wind its way back to being a parish priest, to being a pastor, mm -hmm. to being a teacher. To Newfoundland, to outports in winter, to snowed in churches and sea ice and graveyards frozen right through till May to priests and people discovering Jesus in their lives together. And his eyes would come alive, his face would just light up with the joy of that. And students felt the hope that was in him, and I felt the hope that was in him. But what saith the scripture? I come to 1 Peter 3. Your heritage is the faith of patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and those of every generation who have looked to God in hope. In your hearts, honor Christ as holy. Be always prepared to give an answer to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. <laughs> this man, Ron Cutler, honors Christ as holy and hope is in him. God be praised for calling him to leadership in this church and to this affirmation today of his bond with the students and faculty and mission of Atlantic School of Theology. By the authority vested in me, by the Board and Senate of Atlantic School of Theology, I hereby confer upon you the title of Associate Atlantic School of Theology. Congratulations.
look to see whether it's still morning or afternoon, so it's good afternoon. <laughs> Archbishop Cutler, Primate of the African Orthodox Church, Vincent Waterman, President Neil Bennett, members of the Board of Governors and Senate, faculty members, invited guests, graduates, family, and friends. I acknowledge our presence in Mi'kma'ki, the ancestral territory of the Mi'kmaq people. I also want to acknowledge my ancestors and all those warriors who fought for justice and equality. I stand on their shoulders. Before I go on, I just happen to look up and see Minister Ince. Good morning. I thank God for my many blessings, my family, and close friends for their unwavering support throughout my journey. When I graduated from the Atlanta School of Theology in 2003, with my certificate in theology, little did I know that one day I would serve as chair of the university's Board of Governors and also be awarded an honorary Doctor of Divinity. I am humbled by this great honor. Since my graduation from AST, it has and always will occupy a very warm place in my heart my unwavering belief in God and my faith in his presence in my life make receiving an honorary doctor of divinity very, very special. I hope that as graduates of this remarkable university, you will also feel a strong sense of connection and commitment to AST. You are graduating at a very critical time in modern history. AST's mission to shape effective, ordained, and lay leaders and understanding among communities of faith is an important and timely mission. Now more than ever, we are living in a world where effective, strong, ethical, and spiritual leadership is needed. It is my hope that your education will enhance your life in many ways and prepare you to practice that leadership in your communities. When I was a student at AST, I penned a paper titled, The World is in Need of Spiritual Leadership. My views on spiritual leadership have not changed since writing that paper 16 years ago. It was written in the aftermath of 9-11 terrorist attacks in the United States. At the heart of my paper, I was asking what type of leadership was needed during the period of fear and sadness. Today, many of us are still living in fear. Added to this is a sense of hopelessness, anger, and hate. In my paper, I said we needed strong, smart, and strategic political leadership. But what about spiritual leadership, I ask? When I think about spiritual leadership, several people come to mind. However, because of time constraints, I will only focus on one of those leaders, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, a church leader as well as a leader in the secular world. Dr. King was influenced, not only, he has not only influenced my life, but also the lives of millions of people 
around the world. The 50th anniversary of his tragic assassination was commemorated on April the 4th of this year. The impact of his leadership is still felt across the world. He was a man who had the courage and conviction to stand and fight for justice and liberty. Because he was a church minister, it is not surprising that an abiding faith in God gave him substance and a firm conviction to move forward. During a time when he was needed by black people, Dr. King rose to the challenge that people are looking for leadership, he said. And if I stand before them without strength and courage, they too will falter. We must demonstrate, teach, and preach until the very foundations of our nation are shaken, he said. Dr. King was a visionary with a plan. He had the ability to lead people. He was able to feel a need during a time when many communities in the world needed his guidance. According to Harris Lee, the author of Effective Church Leadership, one of the characteristics of leadership is to clarify and maintain the vision. Dr. King had a vision and he had a dream. He set out on a journey to make society and the world a better place to live. He wanted a welcoming and loving environment for his people and in fact for all people. He was about love, not hate. To accomplish his dream and vision, he went beyond the church walls and into the communities. When I was a manager in the secular world, I did my best to bring to my duties a strong sense of spiritual awareness. My sense of commitment to the Holy Trinity and the Bible allowed me to experience freedom from the inside out. With inner peace, I find there is a stillness of mind and spirit. My spirituality and belief in God helped me to ensure that my decisions were fair and arrived at with compassion and respect. Colossians 3.15, the peace that Christ gives is to guide you in the decisions you make, for it is to this peace that God has called you together in one body and be thankful. Colossians 3.12, you are the people of God. He loved you and chose you for his own. So then you must clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. I believe Dr. King had that inner peace. It could not have been more evident than in his final speech when he predicted his own death. He did so with elegance, grace, and the absence of fear when he said, I just want to do God's will. And he's allowed me to go up to the mountain and I've looked over and I've seen the promised land. I may not get there with you, but I want you to know tonight that we as a people will get to the promised land. So I am happy tonight. I am not worried about anything. I am not fearing any man. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. following day he was murdered. Leaders in the church or in the secular world must have the courage to be agents for a positive change, just as Dr. King had the courage to pursue 
his vision despite the risk it held. In today's world, there is a need for hope, empathy, compassion, and love. Spiritual leaders must rise to this need. If the choice is to pastor a church, then one must move beyond the four walls of the church like Dr. King. Spiritual leaders must motivate their followers to practice the values passed on to us by Jesus Christ. All of us have a role to play to help bring about positive change in a world where there is a need for healing. We must look in our own communities, province, and country and ask the difficult question in the religious, political, or business world, what can I do to help make society a better place for everyone? Sometimes it only takes one person, one idea, and a vision to bring the journey of change it takes courage, determination, and faith to see it through. How will each of you lead positive change in your church, your place of work, or your community? That is a challenge I want to leave in your hands today. I want to close with some words from one of my favorite gospel songs. The words were written by Gloria Gator. I have found comfort and peace with these lyrics, although today I have taken the liberty to tailor some of the words for this special day. I then shall live. I then shall live as one who's been forgiven. I'll walk with joy to know my debts are paid. I know my name is clear before my father. I am his child and I am not afraid. So greatly pardon, I'll forgive others. The law of love, I gladly will obey. We shall live as people who have learned compassion. We have been so loved that we will risk loving too. We know how fear builds walls instead of bridges. And when relationships deem commitment, then we will be there to care and follow through. Your kingdom come around and through and in us. Your power and glory, let them shine through us. Your hallowed name, oh, may we bear with honor, and may your living kingdom come in us. The bread of life, oh, may we share with honor, and may you feed a hungry world through us. Amen, amen, amen. Graduates, the Atlantic School of Theology has given you the tools to face a challenging world. March forward with pride and honor. The world needs you. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you, Dr. Francis. On pages 20 and 21 of your program, you will see an, a number of awards that Atlantic School of Theology is happy to present. These awards are, uh, in most, for the most part, awarded uh, in honor of and with gratitude to a number of uh, donors and friends at the school. So we thank them as well. And we just wanted to take a moment to congratulate those award winners. If you are here today and you see your name, please stand. Congratulations. And I'll invite everyone to stand now as we sing together. Mr. Chair, Reverend President, faculty, staff, families, guests, and fellow students. It is indeed an honor and a great privilege to be speaking here today. I would like to begin by thanking my fellow students for the privilege of speaking on our behalf. I am blessed by your trust in my words. We are all here today marking the end of one part of our journey, a journey which is unique to each one of us. Yet in that uniqueness, there is a common thread that binds us all together into one. It is the common thread of saying yes. Yes to God's call to enter into that sacred dance with the divine. There are many ways to enter this dance with God. The calls that we have each felt are as varied and unique as we are ourselves. So whether that call has brought us to a diploma program, a certificate program, the Masters of Theological Studies, a Masters of Arts, 
or the Master of Divinity program, each one of us has said yes to the call and have been brought together to AST as a part of that journey. This stage of our journey is now coming to an end. What the future holds for each one of us, I cannot say, but I believe that our time together at AST has changed each and every one of us. For some, AST has been a refuge, a place of support and nurture during difficult times. For others, it has been a place that has challenged us to grow in ways that we might not have thought possible. And for others, it has been a safe place to ask questions, whether answers were available or not. I think that for many of us, AST has been a place that has helped us shape who we are and how we understand ourselves and our faith in the world. The mission statement of AST states that it is serves Christ's mission by shaping effective and faithful ordained and lay leaders and understanding among communities of faith. To live into this mission, though, there needs to be effective and faithful leaders helping to guide us as students. The faculty of AST are just such individuals. They are the ones who challenged us to grow, challenged us to think in new ways, challenged us to become more than what we were, challenged us to live more fully into our faith. They have been those who have helped us to say yes to God's call in our lives and open ourselves up to God's presence in our lives and the world. I know that I will be forever grateful for the opportunity to learn and to be mentored by such a group as this. But AST is not only the faculty. It is an entire community made up as, of administration, staff, and boards, and each of them play a role in helping to build AST into a community that welcomes and supports students who find themselves in many different stages of their lives. This openness has fostered a sense of belonging that goes far beyond the classroom and is lived out in the entire life of the school. As students, we truly have been blessed with life in a community that is faithful to helping us live into God's call. Our fellow students have also played an important part in this journey. They have been a place of support and encouragement throughout our time together. We have learned together, laughed together, and let's be honest, probably complained together. <laughs> and in some cases, cried together. This community gathered around the common thread of saying yes has been a blessing for each of us as we come to know God in those around us. We each have come here with a unique understanding of our individual faith traditions, bringing that uniqueness to share with each other. It has been a rich place to learn about ourselves, our faith, each other, and especially to learn more about our God of wondrous diversity. These experiences have shaped us along this part of our journey of faith. We also have many others, those who have supported us on this journey, our families, our chosen families, our mentors, our friends, those who saw gifts in us when we could see none. Those who spoke words of encouragement when we were discouraged. Those who believed in us when our belief in ourselves was hard to find. Those who spoke words of faith when faith seemed lacking. Those who gave to us so that we could take these steps. We hope that you know who you are and that you know that without your love and support, many of us 
would not be here today. It truly has been a community effort, and now we find ourselves in this place this afternoon. My fellow students, this part of our journey in faith comes to a close. The friendships that we have made, the insights we have gained into ourselves and into our faith, the continued call to say yes, go with us from this place. For we truly do live in God's world, and as such, God continues to call us, continues to challenge us to once again enter into that divine dance, to say yes to being God's presence in the world, to say yes to being God's people in a world that can be so difficult at times. Our ongoing work from today is to continue to say yes to where God leads us in this dance, knowing that as we do go forward, it is with the love and support of all who have come before and all those who have brought us to this place. We truly are blessed. Thanks be to God.
the roles of the president of any organization is to communicate its mission. Are you able to hear me? I'll try that again. One of the roles of the president of any organization is to communicate its mission, and I wrote this before this just happened. In a small but complex university, this can involve a lot of repetition. <laughs> I say again, tongue firmly in cheek, this can involve a lot of repetition. But there's an old axiom about consistently conveying a message that by the time you are sick of saying something, others may just be starting to hear it. And sometimes I worry that the reverse is true, that just as I feel that I am starting to get a message across, others are beginning to get sick of me saying it. Well, I'm, I am by no means sick of highlighting AST's mission, and I, and I, I dare say it is resonating. And I have to tell you, I had the honor and privilege and pleasure of acting as MC at the Nova Scotia Leadership Prayer Breakfast on Thursday morning. And in a room full of 400 plus people, there was a good contingent of those from AST. And as I was giving my introductory remarks and began to speak about AST's mission, I said, our calling is to shape. And that <laughs> that's what happened. <laughs> A small chorus of voices from the middle of the Canard Center said, faithful and effective leaders, and it was brilliant. <laughs> that is our mission, to shape faithful and effective leaders and understanding among communities of faith. Many mission statements aren't worth, worth the cost of the plaque that they are engraved on. So the important question is, how real is AST's mission? Is it a box to be ticked on some strategic planning checklist, or does it actually mean something? And how relevant is it? Does it resonate in today's world, given, given the issues facing humanity now and into the future? And finally, does it register? Does it translate into impact? Does it lead to positive change? You might call these the three R's of mission statements. They have to be real, to be relevant and to register. I just coined that, by the way. Feel free to use it. Uh, there are no copyright or trademark issues. Today is the ultimate proof of our mission's realness. Do the graduating students we celebrate today embody our mission? Are they, are you, graduates, faithful and effective leaders? Consider first what it means to be faithful. To, to Christians, it means to put one's trust in God. This is radically countercultural in a world where many technologies and trends and pressures impel us to think that the universe revolves around our own needy ego. From Instagram to the White House, examples of this phenomenon are tragically and terrifyingly common. Thinking this way is, of course, enormously dangerous. When our own individual desires run free, unchecked by our responsibility to others, unshaped by thoughtful reflection and prayer and practice, what suffers is community and justice and human dignity. What suffers is the health and vibrancy and sustainability of the natural world we are blessed to inhabit. And what does it mean to be effective? There's an old chestnut which you may have heard which goes like this, never be so heavenly minded that you are no earthly good. If we are committed to a vision of a better world, a just, a compassionate, a sustainable, loving world, we must be prepared to act to change it. The ability to advance positive change is the true test of effective leadership. Graduates, you have grown in faithfulness and developed in terms of effectiveness. You have been transformed by the renewing 
of your minds. The community that surrounds and supports and upholds you today has seen that and affirms that today. And what of the other two R's? Well, not to put too fine a point on it, the other two R's are up to you. Is our, is our mission relevant? I am confident you will make it so. You are heading out newly equipped as faithful and effective leaders attuned to the challenges and issues, suffering and injustices of the world. And does our mi mission register? Will the world be changed for the better for having you in it and having you offer your leadership to it? I know it will. Let me repeat. I know it will. Because, of course, you will be accompanied by our constant loving God. In the words of the psalmist, even if you settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there God's hand shall guide you, God's hand shall lead you, and God's hand, right hand shall hold you fast. And so now as we approach the end of our ceremony, I offer you the words of our recessional hymn, Go to the World. Go to the World. Go struggle, bless, and pray. For God is with you till the age shall end when all the hosts of glory cry, Amen. Graduates, congratulations. May I invite all of us here today to please join together with me in expressing our congratulations once again to the AST graduating class of 2018. Let me take a moment just to thank those who have done so much to make today's convocation so meaningful. And let me say uh, thank you to Patrick Woodbeck and to Dr. Mayan Francis for your remarks this morning. Uh, they were powerful and inspiring. Thank you to St. Andrew's United Church and to Susan Chisholm, minister here and herself, a recent graduate and faithful, effective leader of AST. And we are grateful for your support and your hospitality. Members of the graduating class have been deeply involved in planning and leading convocation. Thank you. And thanks to the faculty who have so knowledgeably and compassionately, as Patrick said, led our graduates through the learning process. Thanks to, to the staff of AST who have supported our graduates and the operations of the university in so many ways. And here, allow me to remember Jim Weiner, a long serving member of the AST maintenance team and a beloved member of the AST community who sadly passed away just three weeks ago. Jim did much to make AST the hospitable haven for learning that it is. Finally, thanks to all of you who have gathered here today. At the conclusion of the service, please join us for a reception in the upper hall. And now I would like to call upon the most reverend Ron Cutler, associate of Atlantic School of Theology, to give our closing benediction. Please stand as you are able. I think this continues the theme. It's a blessing I found a number of years ago. It's, it's ascribed to the Franciscans, although apparently nobody in any Franciscan community actually claims ownership of it. So it may be wishful thinking. It's a blessing that not only speaks of the peace of the comfort we find in God, but that 
finding that relationship, finding that peace that does pass all understanding, then calls us into action. May God bless us with discomfort at easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships so that we may live deep within our hearts. May God bless us with anger at injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people so that we may work for justice, freedom, and peace. May God bless us with tears to shed for those who suffer from pain, rejection, hunger, and war, so that we may reach out our hands to comfort them and turn their pain into joy. May God bless us with enough foolishness to believe that we can make a difference in this world so that we can do what others claim cannot be done, to bring justice, kindness, hope, and compassion to all. And may God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless and keep you this day and those whom you love, now and always. Amen.